Most of us know about the dangers some plants can pose for our pets. But what about larger animals? There are some toxic plants out there for them as well. Megan Graves is a large animal emergency veterinarian at the University of Tennessee College of Veterinary Medicine. Today, she talks about plants that are toxic to large animals. Thank you for having me here today. As an emergency clinician, I get the calls from panicking producers or owners that think that their horse or their livestock may have been exposed to toxic plants. So I thought I would discuss a few of the most common ones that I hear from. The first one is red clover. Red clover in and of itself is not a concern, but when a fungus grows on the underside of it and produces an alkaloid called slaphermine, horses can present, and sometimes ruminants, with excessive salivation. Those horses typically have just puddles of clear discharge coming from their mouths, and owners can oftentimes be confused and think that that horse may be choking. Thankfully, this tends to be a pretty benign toxin, and when we remove that horse from the either pasture or hay that has that slaphermine in it, those horses tend to resolve, and so this one can be fairly easy. Another common plant that we see cause toxicity issues, particularly in horses, but in other species as well, is actually fescue. Fescue is one of our most common grasses here in East Tennessee and in the Southeast in general. It tends to be our predominant hay source for grass hay and definitely our predominant pasture. It's great because it is so adaptable to many soil types and many climates as well and can even be grazed in the winter. We typically see four different toxic syndromes with this, some that affect cattle more than others. But the one that we hear about most commonly and that we fight against the most is one that affects horses and in particular pregnant mares. When pregnant mares are on fescue pasture or fescue hay in the latter part of their pregnancy, they can experience a lot of complications. Some of the most concerning is that those mares may not produce colostrum or that first milk that is so important to foals. They can also have prolonged pregnancies, thickened placentas, difficulty giving birth, and other complications as well. So it is very important that we simply remove these horses from any fescue exposure for the last three months of their pregnancy. And this will protect not only the mare, but also the foal. Providing shade for livestock and horses is very important, but it's equally important to know what trees are providing shade and if they could be potentially dangerous. This is a red maple tree. Although it is an excellent shade tree, it does pose a very dangerous risk to animals if a limb were to come down, those leaves were to wilt, and then the animal were to consume them. Red maples are oftentimes confused with sugar maples, which we also see a lot of in this area. A red maple can be best identified by the V shape that it makes here at the leaf margin, whereas a sugar maple has more of a U shape. I most frequently hear about horses exposed to red maple after storms. Storms are a great opportunity for leaves or branches to fall down and then wilt in the pasture and then the horse experience exposure to them. So it's important that you walk your fence rows after storms and just ensure that even though that tree may not be on your property, it may be on your neighbor's property and have fallen onto your property and given that risk of exposure to your horse. All horses and livestock do not look the same when they're exposed to a toxin. So if you notice something unusual with your animal in their appetite or in their gait or anything that concerns you, it's important to have your veterinarian take a look. The good news about most toxic plants and trees is that they're not very palatable, meaning they don't taste very good. So it's often that these animals will avoid eating them if they are offered good forage. So make sure they have an adequate diet to avoid these toxins. If you aren't sure if your animals may be at risk, reach out to your veterinarian or your local Ag Extension agent and have them help you identify potentially dangerous plants or trees on your property.